Welcome to Easy Alim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be discussing on the topic nitrogen and its compounds and we're going to be looking at ammonia and the preparation of ammonia and then we're also going to see some of the properties of ammonia. So ammonia is a compound of nitrogen and hydrogen and it is the most important hydride of nitrogen. It is formed when any ammonium salt is heated with an alkali, whether in solid or in solution form. So it's usually a colorless um, a gas with a pungent smell of urine. And then it's alkaline and turns moist red litmus paper to blue when introduced to it. This is actually one of the gases that is alkaline in nature. So it reacts with water to form ammonium hydroxide so the OH present in the solution causes it to be basic. So when it comes to the laboratory preparation of ammonia we have said that it is prepared uh, when ammonium salt is heated with an alkali. So we are going to take a base which is the alkali plus the ammonium salt. So we can use different ammonium salts you are going to mention the ones that are applicable then ammonia and water is formed in the process. So this is the setup. You can see in this case, you are using ammonium chloride and calcium hydroxide. So the mixture is heated and you can see the flask is slanting. So ammonium chloride uh, or sulk ammonoic is mixed in a little dry slaked lime, that is calcium hydroxide, and the mixture is thoroughly ground in a mortar. The reason why we grind it is because we want to increase the surface area for reactions and then the mixture is then heated in a round bottomed flask and the round bottomed flask is used, you notice the round bottomed flask is used in most of the experiments because it ensures a uniform distribution of heat while uh, heating the reagents as you can see and then the flask should be thin walled uh, the pressure of ammonia gas liberated during heating may easily uh, crack or break it. That's the reason why it's thin walled. And then you can you notice now one of the biggest precautions we take um, when we are doing this reaction is the heating should be done and the flask should be placed in a slanting position. And you can see there are some other images where the flask is almost bending completely. The reason why it's heated in this slanting position is to ensure that as the water condenses, because you noticed from the previous um, uh, slide, we said that ammonium is going to be formed with water. So the water is formed in gaseous state, especially for this reaction. So if it condenses and, and runs back into the flask, it's going to cause it to crack. So that's why we have to slant the round bottomed flask. So the mixture on heating produces ammonia, calcium chloride, and water. So this is the equation, as you can see, calcium hydroxide, the slaked lime, reacts with ammonia to form calcium chloride, ammonia gas, and calcium hydroxide reacts with ammonium chloride to form calcium chloride, ammonia, and water. So let's look at also drying. You notice that the gas is passed through uh, calcium hydroxide in this chamber, as you can see, and then it's collected by um, upward delivery. So ammonia is dried by passing it through a tower of a U-tube. It can be a U-tube, as you can see, or in this case, you see this is not a U-tube. Uh, with quick lime, quick lime is calcium oxide or pellets of caustic potash, but not caustic soda, which is the liquescent. So we do not use caustic soda, which is the liquescent, because it absorbs moisture. So if it absorbs moisture and forms a solution, then that's going to interfere in our reaction. So ammonia cannot be drying with usual drying agents, like concentrated sulfuric acid and anhydrous calcium chloride, because it usually reacts with them. So, for example, if ammonia reacts with sulfuric acid, it forms a salt called ammonium sulfate. And if ammonia reacts with calcium chloride, it forms a complex we call calcium chloride ammonia. So you can see the complex in this case, and then the salt when it reacts with the acid. 
that is the reason why we do not use these normal agents so the the unique one that we use for drying is calcium oxide so in the collection ammonia is collected by upward delivery or the downward displacement of air and this is because it's lighter than air and then it's soluble in water so we can't use uh over water method because it's going to dissolve in water actually it's very soluble in water but it's lighter than air so we can we can collect it by upward delivery so the other other methods of preparing ammonia uh, basically or other solutions that are, can be used apart from calcium hydroxide we can use other alkali like caustic soda which is sodium hydroxide or caustic potash which is potassium hydroxide and in this case the slick lime is replaced by either the sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide and the reactant which is ammonium chloride uh, reacts now with ether the sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide so in this case if we use potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide we do not need to slant the flask because what happens is during this reaction water is produced in liquid state it is not produced as a gaseous state which is unlike when the um, ammonium salt or ammonium chloride reacts with calcium hydroxide so ammonium sulfate can also be used in place of ammonium chloride because we said that it's the reaction of ammonium salt with a base so if we react uh, sodium hydroxide with ammonium chloride we form sodium chloride water and ammonia and we can see the ionic equation and if we react potassium hydroxide with ammonium chloride we form potassium chloride water and ammonia next um when we are preparing ammonia solution we will take of course the round bottom flask containing the ammonium salt and calcium hydroxide slate lime and the you can see the apparatus have been tilted because we want the ammonia gas to be collected uh the drying tower is removed you remember in this previous setup we removed the drying tower and then we place a tube with a inverted funnel so the reason why we use an inverted funnel you can see it's very broad so there's a common question that comes on the funnel and a tube so we use a funnel instead because it increases surface area for dissolution so and prevents water from sucking back into the hot flask if we were using a tube just a tube on this um diagram we are using a tube the possibility of suck back would be very high so we should use a um, broad funnel to increase surface area for dissolution and also to prevent suck back and that suck back we know when the water goes back into the flask it will cause um, cracking and also an explosion so that's the equation ammonia reacts with water to form ammonium hydroxide and we know because of this OH ions in ammonium hydroxide this is what makes it to be basic in nature so the solution cannot be prepared by leading the gas directly into the water by the delivery tube as we have said because it's very soluble so it will rush up in the delivery tube uh, into the hot flask causing it to crack that suck back that we talked about so next uh test for ammonia so we test ammonia first of all it is a colorless a uh, pageant it has a pageant smell and then it's alkaline in nature so it's going to turn um, moist red litmus paper to blue so this is very unique because it's one of the gases that is basic so it has some unique properties that are a bit different from other uh, gases and ammonia is brought into contact with hydrogen chloride a dense white fumes of ammonium chloride are formed we previously we discussed in gas laws and we were talking about the rate of diffusion when ammonia reacts with hydrogen chloride gas and we said the one that moves faster so if you want you can check that out in the previous videos so this is the equation ammonia reacts with hydrochloric acid to form ammonium chloride that is a white solid so the fountain experiment shows us the rate at which ammonia dissolves in water the solubility is so high 
So what happens, ammonia is collected in a round bottom flask and the setup is placed as shown. And then a clip is open. You open this clip slowly and allow a small amount of water to rise up in the tube. And that small amount of water is going to dissolve so much water that it's going to create a partial vacuum in the round bottom flask that lowers the pressure. There's a pressure that is lowered in the uh, round bottomed flask. And since the atmospheric pressure in the water is very high, it forces the water into the flask quickly or vigorously. This comes out as a fountain. That's the reason why you see that fountain after some time. So the fountain appears blue due to the alkaline nature of ammonia. If the water was added an indicator, it would come out blue. Ammonia is highly soluble in water, forming alkaline solution of ammonium hydroxide. And one volume of water dissolves about 750 volumes of ammonia. That's how soluble ammonia is. So we look at this one question and then we, uh, we, bring, we come to an end in regards to preparation of ammonia. So complete the diagram below to show how a sample of solution of ammonia can be prepared. So we said this tube is going to be uh, lead and a funnel is going to be attached. So we are preparing a solution. That's something you should note. It's a solution that we are making. So we attach a filter funnel and then we dip that filter funnel in a beaker containing some water. And of course the funnel should at least be inside the, the water at some small distance, not completely outside, because we want the, the ammonia to dissolve. And make sure you label, so this is water. This is a beaker, or you can use a water trap. Uh, you can feel free to show using arrows the movement of the gas, and that will help to show where the gas is moving. So that's how ammonia solution is prepared using a filter funnel, and the the gas is led into a um a beaker or a water bath containing water. So that brings us to the end. Uh, see you in the next lesson as we look at uh, other properties of ammonia.